When making cookies, it's important to have the right equipment. So, as you can see, I have my apron. I have my knife and my mixer. And I have my chef's hat. Now, there's a lot of different recipes you can choose from whenever you decide to make cookies. Today, I'm going to make some poplar cookies. But one of these days, I may make some white oat cookies, some red oat cookies, maybe even some walnut cookies. But poplar cookies won't take quite as long to bake. Now, we'll talk about baking later, whenever we get to the oven. But right now, I want to talk about what I'm going to do with my ingredients. So as you can see, I have poplar as my main ingredient. I'm going to slice it up into about 24 inch sections so that way whenever I get it to the mill I will be able to slice them just like a cookie. So for these cookies we don't need a super powerful or sharp knife. What I'm talking about is poplar is a softer hardwood so if you are going to be cutting cookies out of white oak, red oak, or even walnut you would need or probably want a more sharp and powerful chainsaw. All right, something happened that I didn't think was going to happen, but it happened. Um, this dough is very dense. Um, I'm thinking this dough weighs over a hundred pounds pretty easily. Um, I can't lift it very easily, so I don't want to hurt myself. I'm going to cut it in half. Still only going to do three and I'm going to cut this one in half and this one in half and then I will take it to the mill. I lied. I'm only going to do two logs today. I need to sharpen my chainsaw. This thing is cutting very bad. It took me, no lie, probably five minutes to just cut through that one piece of poplar and that's awful. So I know this is already an underpowered chainsaw, but still it shouldn't take that long. Anyways, um, y'all will understand the process of what to do after I get this to the sawmill and explain everything. So if y'all were to do this yourselves, you would understand exactly how to do it. First you want a piece of wood going across these bunks so the cookie can set on them. Uh, that's what this log dog is going to clamp into to allow it to actually stay secure whenever you are going to push the sawmill through the cookie. As you can see, these are uh, very well connected now, but some of you may have already realized that there's a screw sticking up in the middle of this log, so I don't need to cut where this screw is. So in order to let myself have a reminder of where this screw is, I'm going to put a board right here, so that way whenever I get to this board, I will not cut any further. If 
You're then going to raise your log stops up a little bit to catch this supporting piece of wood. Then you want these right here. This is important to remember. Your logs can't go over the side of the mill because the mill won't be able to pass through them. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a spacer in between my uh, supporting piece of wood and the log stop. So that wasn't a big deal. All, all I did was get a piece of wood and put it between the piece of wood that's supporting my cookies and the log stop. So now you want to just make sure that whenever you push it, it doesn't move. So the sawmill is of course gonna be pushing horizontally. So if I'm trying to push these cookies with all my force and they're not going anywhere, then I should be okay. I'm just doing this real quick to show y'all how to do this for your own business or your own sawmill or whatever you're wanting to do with these cookies. So this whole board could technically be filled with logs like this. And then every time you cut, you could be making multiple cookies. For me, I'm only gonna be making two cookies at a time because I only have two logs on here. And ignore the top of these. My chainsaw was uh, crapping out on me and I also am not very good with a chainsaw. I should probably get better if I'm gonna continue this endeavor. Anyways, I'm gonna show y'all what these cookies look like after I cut them. I don't know how much you were able to tell in the video, but there was a lot of lateral movement whenever I was pushing the sawmill through. Um, so I decided to brace it on the back. So what I'm gonna do is actually clamp it to the supporting piece in the front on the cookies. And I'm gonna see if that alleviates some of that rocking. That seemed like it worked. I'm going to start the sawmill and then take another thin slice off the top because that rocking made this one uneven. So we'll see how that works. This is the final product. It is 15 inches wide by 17 inches wide, if you want to say that, since it's kind of a circle. Um, these were not that hard to make. I just screwed them in from the bottom. I saw some guy on Facebook, I'm a part of a sawmill group, and they said screw it in from the bottom on a piece of wood. They didn't say how to secure it other than that, so I made up the boards and the spacing and everything like that, but I'm pretty sure that's how they would do it as well. If you have a better way to do it, please let me know. I do think these cookies will sell pretty well. I think you can get about 10 or $15 a piece from these. They are going to have to dry for about two months. But after that, people use them for weddings. People use them to carve on, to paint on. Uh, a lot of people use them for table decorations. But they are going to have to dry. So I'm going to show you 
how to dry them without them warping, cupping, and checking excessively. So let me show you that. So this is how I stack my cookies. I just use the stickers on both sides of the cookies. Um, these are an inch by an inch sticker. I make sure that they are, for the most part, in line with one another. This allows air to flow through the cookies and prevents mold. So it, al it also allows them to dry faster. So you want to put weight on top to prevent them from warping or checking and you just want that weight to push down on them. Um, you want to prevent anything from touching this bottom cookie, so there's stickers on the bottom. I will put these in a dry environment, which allows air to flow through them. If you have any ideas for me, please let me know. If you have any tips on how I can do this more efficiently, please let me know that. If you enjoyed the video or you got something from it, please remember to hit the like button. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I hope you all have a great day.